Welcome everyone to today's Nukui Youth Council Indigenous Medicine Campaign presentation and Decolonizing Our Hearts and Minds Summer Series. Today's workshop and talking circle is part two of a two-part series hosted by Nukui's Youth Council and focuses on mental wellness. We are pleased that you all have joined us today we kindly ask that you place your name, organization, travel affiliation title into the chat box portal for this session uh, as, we, as we start uh, today's uh, workshop and talking circle. My name is Subu Kuyumjin. I am the public health associate for the Technical Assistance and Research Center at the National Council of Urban Indian Health, or NUKUI for short. Before we get started, we will be uh, opening up today's session in a good place by, by having a opening uh, prayer from our main presenter, Brian Frejo. Brian, I will now pass over the mic to you to get us, uh, to start us in a good place and open up today's session. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, I just want to welcome everyone today. I'm, I'm, we're all uh, probably coming from different areas, different places on this uh, Friday here. Ending this week, starting our weekend, and I want to open up our Nakui session here today, Reindigenizing Health, uh, Decolonizing our, our Hearts and Minds, and, and all, all the programming out, out there helping our communities. I uh, share a prayer with you as I hold this uh, eagle feather here. Um, coming to you guys from uh, the uh, Salt Lake City, Utah area today. And uh, so I'll share this prayer, uh, everyone, today, wherever you're at. <clears throat> all of our uh, youth, all of our communities, wherever they're coming in from today, uh, share, hold this eagle feather uh, uh, representing our prayers and uh, all the directions that our people are coming in from, wherever they're at, wherever they're going through in their life right now, that uh, we can share good words, share good medicine, uh, good teachings with each other here today. Maybe all, uh, maybe learn something new today as we gather here in It's a Hawk, Hawaii, Steve, and gather here in a virtual circle in a sacred place. As you look over our communities, our people, as we continue to go through this pandemic, and that uh, you just guide us in a good way at the, so we have an open mind, you know, to do the uh, do the best things that we can, you know, to, to uh, protect our health, our communities, our, our families, relatives, loved ones, extended families. And uh, look over us as we start this session today. Bless all the young people here that, that we're reaching out to that are coming together for something good, something good for, uh, for our community, something good for our future. Uh, bless all of them and their families, their loved ones. And uh, thank you for Nakui and this programming here that, that we're able to share these messages and these good words today. Say, Aho, Noah, Iri, Turahe, Tura, Chikstahu, Tias, Turawaha. Um, what oh, he's all gonna miss it. Hope. Thank you, Brian, for the opening prayer for today's session. Yate, she, Lauren, et city, and she, Dora Olin, she, do Jose Hutchini, but she, do ya, Edena, Dasha J, Kiani, Dasha Nella. Uh, my name is Lauren Etsidi. I'm a member of the Dene, the Navajo Nation. I also represent the Dodo Odom Nation. I currently reside in Flagstaff, Arizona. I received my bachelor's degree in information science and technology from Penn State. I will be pursuing a master in epidemiology. I'm currently a data specialist for a urban Indian suicide prevention program. And I advocate for suicide prevention and well-being for American Indians and Alaska Natives. And I'll be your host for today's session. Next slide. As you see on the screen, it's today's agenda and we'll be presenting Youth Council's presentation, wellness workshop and a talking social um, session and the raffle at the end. Next slide. Due to the nature of decolonizing our hearts and minds summer series, the talking portion will not be recorded to ensure a safe and comfortable participant experience. We kindly ask for the following. Refrain from sharing the Zoom link or access code with others. Refrain from recording the session. Be mindful of your Zoom environment. 
If you cannot be alone and do not have access to headphones, please ensure individuals in the room also agree to the confidentiality agreement. Nukui will also have a staff support person on the line and a virtual wellness breakout room. Um, screen sharing has been disabled. If you feel uncomfortable during the session, feel free to log off at any time. If you like additional assistance, you can call the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, as well as Strong Hearts Native Helpline at 1-844-762-8438. Any trolling, doxing, or Zoom bombing will result in participant removal. Next slide. Also, here are some housekeeping for today's session. Today's session is being recorded, except for the talking circle session. All mics have been muted unless otherwise directed. Nikui has an emotional and support staff during this today's session. As well, today's session is a 90 minute session. We also have polling questions that can be used in the, in the chat box down below. And you can also put any um, Q and A's down in the chat. Participants will have a chance to win native raffle items at the end of the session. Next slide. How to ask a question or a comment. First, select chat at the bottom of your Zoom screen and you select chat at the bottom and then you can input your question. Next chat. How to ask for social and support, emotional support. As I mentioned earlier, due to the nature of today's content, if any participants need a social or emotional support, they can do so. Nakui staff, Antoinette Asenio will be able to provide a private support for participants in today's session. If any time you feel you need to speak with Antoinette, please click on the chat icon. Next, you'll press the downward arrow and select Antoinette's name. This will create a direct chat with Antoinette. Type in, in the private chat with Antoinette that you would like to go in the in the wellness breakout room, Antoinette will let our back end know to put you in a breakout room and both of you will have your own private room. Next slide. The new Kui Youth Council is through Native Connections Agreement with SAMHSA. Through the development of the Youth Council, Nukui seeks to support Native youth and young adults under 25 and becoming advocates and leader for urban Indian health sectors and communities, especially with youth suicide and substance abuse and recovery support. Nukui provides youth council members with behavioral health education, intertribal cultural connectedness activities, leadership, professional development skills, self-care and wellness activities. Next slide. Now I'd like to share a brief bio of each presenter today. We have Sam Solrick, who is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation who resides in New Haven, Connecticut. Sam graduated from Vanderbilt University where he majored in economics. While at Vanderbilt, he volunteered extensively with the Native American Indian Association of Tennessee. As a current student at Yale Law, Sam serves as a co-president of the Yale Law and Business Society and is an active member of the Native American Law Students Association. Following law school is Sam's attention to work in public service, specifically for Native American legal issues. Next slide. This is Tia Yazi. Tia is the NEH and from Fort Defiance, Arizona, a master's with a social work candidate at University of Washington. Tia would like to become a licensed clinical social worker to provide therapy that use cultural based mythologies to help Native youth, women, families, families heal from any form of violence they experience throughout their lives. Next slide. Here is Tiana Denekla. Tiana is the Neh. The Navajo Nation is, is from currently New Mexico or is from New Mexico and currently lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tiana attends the University of New Mexico majoring in pre-business and minoring in community health education. Tiana openly identifies as queer. He used he, him, and they, them pronouns, and is interested in economics, public health, and art. Next slide. Finally, we have Elizabeth Alexander. Elizabeth is an enrolled member of the Sinmal Nation of Oklahoma, a resident of Mustaine, Oklahoma, graduated in 2020 from Oklahoma State University with a bachelor's of science in psychology, 
currently working as a sexual advocate, assault advocate for the Iowa tribe of Oklahoma, and will be pursuing a PhD um, in clinical psychology at the University of North Dakota, plans to work with Native communities to provide, promote mental health and the importance of traditional practices. Next slide. During today's presentation, we hope to hit a few objectives. During a youth council presentation, you should be able to understand the purpose of indigenous medicine campaigns, ways to become a health indigenizer will also be shared. And through Brian's presentation, we hope to provide mental health strategies, resources for native youth during COVID-19. Next slide. So here's our first polling question. As you can see, we are using everywhere poll and you can respond by a text message. All right, so using an emoji, you can show how you're feeling today. So we got a response with an emoji with little hearts. Showing a little love, I like that. Ooh, we got another one. We got a cool guy with some glasses. We got, ooh, some of these emojis I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> A little star galaxy. Ooh, I like the one with the little hands. And a smiley face. Looks like everyone's doing well out there. Thank you for your responses. And then we can continue to our next polling question. So our polling question is open-ended and this question is what are some ways, what are some health challenges facing our native youth today? Or what are you currently facing? This is an open-ended question, meaning there is no right or wrong answer. Your answer can be whatever you think best describes your experience. So substance abuse, isolation, loneliness, especially during the COVID pandemic for sure. Suicide, suicide ideations. Bullying. Yeah, these are really real mental health challenges that we currently face in Indian country, in our urban Indian environments. Also food, neural typical centric society, depression. Thank you guys for sharing your mental health challenges. This gives us a very good view of what we're currently facing, the lack of access to food and healthy food. All right, we can go on to our next slide. And now I'll pass it on to Tia. Well, thank you, Lauren. Um, so, yat e she e tia yazi yanishia, honogaki nishlan torichini bushishin, honogaki dasha che ma idish kishin dashinele, aro se hatso de nasha. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Tia, as Lauren mentioned. Um, so I'm currently residing in Salt Lake City, Utah, but I will be moving to Seattle this coming fall to pursue my master's in social work. Um, and so today I'll be talking about the purpose of our Youth Council's national hashtag Indigene Medicine campaign. Next slide, please. Awesome. So we have a campaign goal um, and so as Native youth ourselves, we felt that it was critical to include the voices of those who we are serving. 
Um, so we also felt that during the COVID-19 pandemic that mental health and relationships were the most big two things that were impacted um, because we have been isolated for over a year now. Um, and with emerging variants, we don't know how long we'll be in this like social disconnection still. So we still feel that these two things are very important. Um, and so many of us feel disconnected and we hope to provide culturally relevant resources that focus on rebuilding healthy relationships between families, partners, and friends, but also provide a way to promote mental wellness during a time we feel disconnected from the world, our culture, and our social lives. Therefore, we came up with this campaign goal, which is to amplify Native youth voices by connecting them to culturally relevant resources that focus on promoting mental wellness and building healthy relationships during the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide, please. So we have three um, objectives for our Indigenous Medicine campaign. The first objective is to await or raise awareness on healthy relationship practices for Native youth within professional and personal educational spaces by providing and connecting them to resources by August 2021. The second objective is to educate Native youth on traditional and holistic tools within professional, personal, and educational spaces. And the third objective is to create safe and healthy spaces that will promote positive mental health through conversations that focus on Indigenous healing practices for Native youth. So we thought these were good objectives um, and, and were achievable, right? Because we wanted to be smart when we came up with these objectives. And, and so we all decided on these together. Um, and so we also felt that um, we could follow through with these objectives through our talking circles, which we'll be doing one today. And then through our other future or past um, workshops that we have done for the um, relationship workshop also. So next slide, please. Awesome. So this is our Indigi Medicine social media campaign. Um, it's a quick screenshot or snapshot of how they look. So on the left um, in the pink, we have our healthy relationship zine. Um, and then on the uh, right, we have our mental wellness toolkit. So these were created by our Nukui Youth Council. Um, each of us took part in making these things and along with the Nukui staff, um, they supported us in making both of these two um, very, very, very well done social media campaigns. Um, so like I said before, we wanted to provide culturally relevant resources that focus on rebuilding healthy relationships between families and partners and friends, but also finding a way to connect youth and um, others to mental health resources during this time of COVID-19. Um, so we're very grateful for the QE staff and team for helping us put these together. Um, so now I will hand it over to Tayanin who will dive deeper into looking at the healthy relationship scene. Um, so next slide, please. Okay, so I don't, see him on here. So I'll take over for this part. Um, so I can take over this. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. So Elizabeth Alexander. My name is Elizabeth. Um, and me and Tayana actually works pretty closely with for the healthy relationship scene. And our concept was um, taken from a Seminole tribe patchwork design, which is called the everlasting fire. Um, and this represents the continuity of the fire we have within ourselves. And so my, uh, when I, I actually created the artwork for it, um, as I was creating it, I was thinking, you know, we talk about how sacred our fire is at our ceremonial grounds and how what we do feeds that fire. And it can be a good fire or it can be a bad fire and it can hurt people. And so that's how I see our relationships is that we're feeding the flames of another por another person. So we wanna support them and do good things with them um, to keep that fire good. 
in the zine, it recognizes um, healthy relationships and healthy habits in relationships, but it also sparks a conversation about, you know, what are healthy and unhealthy relationship habits. So it goes into, you know, characteristics of healthy relationships as well as unhealthy relationships. Um, and include, it brings a diversity to it because we also examined unhealthy habits in LGBTQIA plus two-spirit uh, relationships, um, which broadly normalize accountability. So being responsible for your actions and um, you know, taking responsibility for things you might've done or said um, to keep the relationships healthy. So Mado, next slide, please. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, the second project we developed is a hashtag NDG Medicine Mental Health Toolkit. Um, we recognize the need for indigenized mental health tool in social media as well in, on Indian country. Um, the toolkit brings awareness on suicide prevention, um, also brings in factors of um, risk factors in our communities as well as warning signs and also provides a good list of resources. Um, the toolkit is, we created a toolkit to help empower ourselves and to be, aware on, to be aware of suicide prevention and to empower our communities and as well to be a good relative because we matter. And I would like to um, pass it on to Sam. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know some introductions were offered of the youth council members earlier, but I would just like to briefly reintroduce myself. My name is Sam, and I am a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, and I am currently in law school. And today I'm going to be speaking to all of you about what it means to be a health indigenizer and how you can bring the information you learn today back to your communities, to your family, and to your friends. And we hope that all of you will stick around with us uh, till the end of the presentation and choose to get involved. Uh, because if you do, we've got some really great prizes that I am going to explain later. So um, I am going to share my screen. So what does it mean to be a health indigenizer? Um, well, we can break it down into five different points. And first and foremost, it is an individual of native descent who is proud of their indigenous identity. So when I began speaking, the first things I said were my name, what tribe I'm a member of, and what I'm currently doing. And those are great ways to define your identity. But thinking more closely about what defines indigenous identity, so much of it is shaped by our history. Uh, where we come from and who we are today is shaped by the people who came before us. So perhaps today you continue to speak a native language that was passed down to you um, from your family uh, or through your tribe, or maybe you continue to practice certain ceremonies. Um, these are all great ways that demonstrate that you are proud of your indigenous identity, but honestly, it can be even easier than that. Maybe you just talk with friends who are unfamiliar with your cultural background about certain things that are unique to you and to your tribe. These are all great ways to show how proud of you are of your indigenous identity and leads me to my second point. As much as we need to be mindful of our history and the people we come from, we also need to make sure that we're empowering future generations by helping them build healthy relationships and promoting their mental wellness. So on the first part, building healthy relationships is something we spoke about earlier in the presentation, but to help everyone clarify whether they are actually in a healthy relationship, uh, you can think about some different questions such as, are you being kind um, to your family, to your significant other, or to the friend that you're in a relationship with? Are you being vulnerable with them? Uh, do you take time to ensure that you're paying attention to their needs, that you're being a good listener? These are all great questions to ask yourself to determine, are you in a healthy relationship? Um, the pandemic has been really incredibly challenging for all of us. It's been isolating. And so I think right now, more than ever, it is important uh, to be sharing resources with others about how to promote healthy relationships. And we hope that you will use the um, information you learned today uh, to share with your family and with your friends and the people you're in relationships with. 
And then on the second point, promoting mental wellness, this can be just as much as reaching out to a friend who you know is in need, or perhaps you're connecting them with resources such as the resources we have today, or other resources such as a counselor or a support group. Um, those are all great ways to promote mental wellness and leads me into my third point. Um, in order to promote mental wellness, you have to build spaces where people feel comfortable and safe to share their experiences. So for example, you need to let people know that you hear them um, and that you're being attentive to their needs and to their stories. And more than, that, more than just that, that you're really listening and that you're paying attention and hearing them. Um, and you can challenge yourself to do so by, be, by being vulnerable. Um, and that will invite the other person to feel like they can be vulnerable with you, which leads me into my fourth point. Um, we want to ensure that we are inspiring Native youth to make healthy choices. And this is, of course, complex because um, health is so uh, like ranging. It goes from your physical health to your mental health, your emotional and your spiritual health. These are all overlapped and intertwined in such ways that can lead me into my fifth point. So your indigenous culture can be an incredibly powerful tool um, to serve as medicine to help heal people. So long before there was westernized medicine, there were healers who used traditional and natural resources to help heal people. And all of this was supported by the very strong commitment that those healers had to their indigenous identity and to their indigenous culture. And so we just wanna em emphasize to all of you that our culture collectively and individually can be a really powerful tool uh, to help you heal people. And we're excited because we have some really great prizes uh, if you commit to participating and getting involved. Uh, the first is by being part of the presentation today. So if you stick around to the end of the presentation and um, provide feedback during our polling questions, we will enter you uh, to win some really great Native swag and then the second way that you can um, get involved and win is to create and share a post through your preferred social media platform using the hashtag IndigiMedicine uh, infographic and the resource images, which kind of talk about how to build healthy relationships and how to promote mental wellness and all the resources that we have outlined in those. Um, are That's the first way. Um, and then the second way, continuing on, uh, is to create and share a post using the IndigiMedicine filters from our toolkit and answer one of the two questions of what does a healthy relationship look like to you and how do you stay well personally? Um, we ask that you would share this on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever's best for you, that you like Nakui's social media pages um, and submit your social media posts by the deadline of 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on August 28th. 2021. And if you do all of that, then we've got some really great prizes such as an Amazon gift card. We've got some great swag for all of you. Um, and we're really excited to be sharing all of this with you and can't wait to see what you end up posting and share. And of course, um, we will um, be in touch with you if you win the prize. So thank you so much for participating today. And we look forward to hearing back from all of you. Awesome. Yes. So just picking up um, a little bit after where Sam left off for the Indigenous Medicine campaign. So the campaign began on June 28th and will end August 28th of 2021. And the winners of the prizes mentioned in the previous slide will be notified the first week of September 2021. So it's coming a little fast, but you still got some time. If you have any questions regarding the prizes, um, Indigenous Medicine campaign, um, you can please contact. please contact uh, our Senior Communications Associate, Victoria Humphreys, at vhumphreys at nikui.org, or the Public Health Associate, Cebu Kiumjin, um, at S, and I'm just gonna spell out your last name, Cebu, K-O-U-Y-O-U-M-J-I-A-N, at nikui.org. Next slide, please.
Awesome. So these are just some strategies on promoting mental wellness. And um, so some things we can do are maintaining a daily routine with consistent sleep, activity, and study patterns. Staying connected with others and trying to find moments of gratitude. So just soaking everything in, just realizing you've made it a long way um, and appreciating that because um, you are strong enough to have made it this far. Um, talking with people you trust about your concerns and how you're feeling. You know, take deep breaths, stretch, or meditate just to get any of the bad stuff out. Um, try to eat healthy, well-balanced meals, which I can attest is very hard, but is well worth it. Limit coffee or energy drinks as these will increase feelings of anxiety and make it difficult to relax. So you get the jitters, you just can't, you just can't calm down sometimes. Um, and look for patterns or be aware of situations that make you feel particularly worried or anxious. And my mom knows all of my patterns. So I always get upset when she's asking me if I'm okay because she already knows I'm not. <laughs> um, exercise regularly, get plenty of sleep and limit the amount of time you spend consuming news media or social media. It's too much, can really mess with you. Um, do hobbies or activities that you enjoy calm you down or focus your mind and body. Personally, I enjoy doing word searches because I'm a 90 year old grandma at heart. Um, understand that the people around you are also, are probably also finding the situation stressful. And most of all, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. You know, like Lauren mentioned earlier, be a good relative. Next slide, please. And so we've been talking about native wellness, um, but what is native wellness? Um, you hear the term uh, tossed around a while, but it's really an important uh, component of health and general welfare among American Indian indigenous communities. Um, in many tribes, this concept signifies more than the absence of disease. It's a balance of different things like, you know, your mental health, your physical health, um, your external health, like in your relationships, and that goes into that too. You know, one thing goes out of balance, then everything is out of balance. And this concept of wellness is central to many American Indian cultures. Um, and it's the belief in the interconnectedness of all aspects of one's life and everything in the world. Um, so to live in harmony, one must balance all parts of life, including the physical, the mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being with the environment. And um, as I mentioned before, the failure of any or all of these parts of wellness can yield poor outcomes in other aspects of life. So, you know, one thing goes out of whack and everything else kind of goes out of whack too. Next slide, please. All right. So now that we've talked about wellness, how can we use that to promote mental wellness? Uh, one great way is to know the signs of someone who might need to talk to someone. Um, and as a disclaimer, this slide talks about some warning signs seen in someone who might be thinking about suicide. So if you notice a sudden change in personality, um, we're giving away personal items or any of the things listed on this slide, reach out to someone. If it's not an emergency, start a conversation with that person and let them know you're concerned. Be sure to listen and understand the other person instead of just hearing them. Tell someone you trust about that person and get, get their help. Simply being there for someone could be the nicest thing anyone has done for that person. And lastly, get help for that person. Knowing these signs is important so we help our families and our communities. Next slide, please. All right, and these are resources for Native youth um, that are culturally competent um, and relevant. Um, so they do take into account our traditional practices and thought processes. So please feel free to write these down, share them, get them out. Um, we have included um, LGBTQIA plus resources. Um, so please write them down, um, know that they are here for you. 
um, and, you know, share them with whoever might need them. And please remember that these resources are here to help um, and it's their job to answer the phone or text you. So do not feel like a burden for calling or texting. Um, they do it because they truly care. That's what they'd want to do. And now I'll hand it back over to Lauren so we can do another awesome polling question. Next slide, please. Thank you, Elizabeth. So our polling question for today is, what does wellness mean for Native youth in your communities? And those who has joined, um, we are using Poll Everywhere and you can text Wired Sun 334 to 2233. And once you join, and then you can response with text. I would give you guys a second to type your responses. Looks like we have no takers. <laughs> um, if it's easier, you can also type it in the chat down below. Uh, for me personally, I'll just throw my answer out real quick. Um, wellness means um, being connected um, to our like traditional practices and, you know, knowing the meaning of those practices. Um, so that's what it means for me. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, well, I was going to say using our language and culture every day, um, because I know many of us don't know those things. And I think having a full, um, full wellness and that meaning using is using those things too. Yeah. Thank you, Tia, for sharing. It looks like the poll is not working, but I got some responses. Happiness, um, native food, family relationships, con connect to the land. Yeah, these are great. And we'll go on to our next slide. Thank you for everyone who have um, responded. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we'll be hearing from Brad Frejo, um, Brian Frejo. Brian is a member of the Pawnee Seminole Nation. Brian is a motivational speaker, leadership and team builder, team building trainer, Native American health and wellness advocate, a traditional based practitioner, and a cultural advisor. Brian, Brian is skilled in working in urban and rural communities, youth, youth and elders, families, diverse programs, building partnerships with key stakeholders in the community. Brian strives to empower youth, adults, elders, and communities to reclaim and celebrate their traditional healing practices, traditional foods, and nutrition as well as fitness activities, cultural life ways, and overall spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical health and wellness. Thank you, Brian, and you can take it away. No, uh, thank you, Lauren, for that introduction. Uh, many Mado's appreciate that. It's always good to uh, you know, be, be included, be a part of the things that are happening in Indian country and in our communities with our, with our youth, with our, um, our elders, you know, our families. And uh, I'm just glad to be here today for this, this session, uh, Reindigenize Health. You know, when I see some of the, the titles and, and um, topics and themes that we have for our gatherings, you know, they, they really, um, they make an impact. 
And that's what we're here to do today. And just listening to just the, the opening uh, to this session, you know, as, uh, you know, I always, I was told when I was young, you know, to always, um, to keep learning, to always keep learning. Don't uh, ever think that, um, that you know it all. And that uh, when you think you know it all, one of my grandpas said, when you think you know it all, the creator is going to teach you another lesson. And so I always remember that. And I was like, okay, you know, like, and now we say, you know, to um, you know, build capacity or to have an open mind. You know, we hear these different terms and, and um, that were, that are shared in our communities or maybe from our elders, from our parents, you know, from a mentor and, um, you know, they resonate and they pass on. We continue to pass these, these words, these messages down to our next generation. So I'm glad to be here today. Uh, there's a few things that we're going to talk about and, you, you know, I know when we gather a lot of times now with the, all the changes that that's happening in our communities across Indian country, you know, we're, we've transitioned, you know, they, they say it, uh, it was a word that, that came out early that was to pivot, you know, to pivot, make a pivot step, move this way, that way. How do we get around this? You know, how do we find a way around maybe a, a challenges or things in our way? And uh, we're all doing that. So we've been very, uh, we might not realize it sometimes, but we've been very resilient during this past year and a half. And that doesn't even count for the things that were happening before the pandemic. And so today I just wanna share a little bit, um, a, a couple things that I wanted to talk about today. You guys might've seen it in the agenda was, um, one was resilient uh, traditional leadership and talking about some of those things. Uh, Victoria, if you could share that first slide and some few things that I wanted to cover. And I know our time goes by really fast when we, uh, when we start these conversations. So one of the, the things I wanted to ask, you know, in our poll, if it's working for you, depending on if you're in your computer, your PC, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, whatever you're using, uh, just one question is what is traditional knowledge? Uh, just to ask you that question right there, you guys can see it. Um, and, and we might all have different answers. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to answer that. Um, we're, we always get some good, um, good response, you know, when we start to ask questions like this because we were all grew up maybe different places, different ways, different uh, types of families, different environments, communities, cities, reservations, the country. So, uh, you know, these are going to pop up and, and all of these, these words that we're hearing today is that, you know, we might not all be experts, you know, but we're, we're finding our way, you know, in this journey. And so when we start to ask these questions, you know, we all have something to share. And that's what I think is beautiful about our, our communities and our, our um, they, I might call them sacred teachings. But here's just a few answers right now. And some of the answers that you guys put to the other questions before this, you know, we can all learn, we can all continue to learn and, and um, take in these teachings. And then when we start to, to get these teachings, yeah, food, I see that, you know, we, all of our tribes, all of our people, we have all different kinds of foods different kinds of vegetables and fruits, different native recipes that we're seeing across Indian country too. I like the answers here, ceremonies, life. So we'll go to the first slide. I wanna kind of go through our, what is, uh, you know, resilient traditional leadership when we start having these conversations. And the next question, actually we have two questions. So uh, what do you know about the medicine world teachings? And as a, you might see this uh, image here, you know, there's a lot of different images we might see for this medicine wheel. Some people, you, you might have seen it, seen it, but we might not be familiar with it or the teachings that go along with it. So, you know, and, that, and that's okay because we're all in different places. You know, we're all still learning. Maybe some of us are just learning songs. Maybe we're just learning the language. Um, maybe we're just learning about our traditional foods. So really good answers here. So, yeah, thank you guys for, for uh, sharing that. So this medicine wheel right here, we're going to talk a little bit about that too. So these are a couple of questions we just wanted to ask uh, to you, to all of you out there, wherever you're at on this Friday evening. Feels really good to be hitting the weekend, starting the weekend like this. You know, we're kind of ending the week, work week, some of us, um, and, and then starting our weekend. In, in what we say here in our in our teachings is in a in a good way or with good medicine, you know, this, these things that we're sharing here today. So thanks for those answers. Um, we'll go to the first slide. Um, this first, the, I'm gonna share a few slides from this uh, PowerPoint here. And when people ask me about, you know, traditional leadership or uh, resiliency, uh, what does that mean? 
you know, what, where did I learn uh, some of my leadership skills? And I feel like, you know, there was a, there were a lot of teachers. So when I start, you know, uh, talking about these kind of presentations, you know, I kind of go back and think about my own journey. So talking about resilient traditional leadership and the, and the power of vision and action is one of the, the messages that I always like to put into my trainings, you know, and, and now during this, this last year and a half is during a pandemic, you know, that started last year and that a lot of our um, people, our ancestors have been through, uh, have been through pandemics, you know, in the past. We've been through epidemics. We've been through a lot of a lot of struggles and challenges, and we're still here. And that's where that that word resiliency comes from. So I'll share that next slide. So when we talk about resilient, being resilient or uh, resiliency, you guys can probably go to any um, to any dictionary and and start you know looking some of these words up. You know, some of us are very skilled in the vocabulary, but we're some of us are still learning. So just resilient. And resiliency is when a person or animal's uh, capacity to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Um, our toughness, you know, what, what makes us strong. Sometimes we don't, maybe we don't feel strong, you know, but we've been, so we, we might have been through a lot of, a lot of challenges in our life and we don't know how strong we are. And so right here, I wanted to share this in this photo and this slide that, that medicine too, that goes along with our strength and resiliency. We have a lot of sacred teachings, a lot of medicines uh, among our different tribes, you know, that are um, highly respected, you know, and, and they're used, you know, we're, we're using these medicines, we're implementing them into our life. And so this right here was a field of sage, uh, this katadu medicine that's um, important amongst a, a lot of our tribes that um, when you smell this sage, you know, they say this, this medicine right here can protect us, you know, protect us from things that are out there. And, and that maybe that's a part of our resilience when we use these medicines, you know, they're putting that protection around us to help us through those struggles and difficulties that maybe we're facing. So in our land, um, actually this, this medicine, we call it uh, Kiwadu, Kiwadu, the sage right here. So I wanted to share that with you guys in this first slide when we talk about resiliency. Uh, the next slide. And then talking about all, how all the, these are all connected, you know, in, in our leadership, our leadership skills, our leadership development, and that uh, leadership is uh, achieved by strong decisions and values. And, and where do we learn these? You know, maybe we can think right now, who taught us some of our leadership skills? You know, what did we see? What were some examples that we saw in our life, in our journey, you know, where we saw someone that had these leadership skills or somebody shared one with us, you know, and then, and then we kind of, we kind of took it and then we we um, implemented it into our life and our journey and maybe we changed it a little bit added our own added our own uh you know our own unique uh, uh piece into that and so another another thing that i read i really liked is that a leader is one who inspires and motivates action so when i talk about leadership i talk about the power of vision and action because they're all connected our vision or in our mind you know what we think about what maybe what we dream about uh, our goals, things that are important to us, things that we, that we want to do in our life and in our journey. And then the choices that we make, you know, to make those things happen. We have to make some, uh, they, they call it critical decision making. Maybe we have to make some strong choices in, in our life and our journey that, that help us achieve these goals. And, and these are all connected. So then when I look at this, you know, these, some of these quotes that I see out there, I'm like, oh, I like that, you know, that they, just the way they said it, you know, it just, it doesn't take much, you know, to, to share these words of truth, you know, when they come from our heart, when they come from a good place to really uh, make an impact in what we're trying to say. So this one was from uh, Teresa Chichi uh, from a book called The Balance. So next slide. <clears throat> so, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that we think about when somebody asks, you know, are you a leader? Sometimes I'll ask that question, you know, and, and not very many people raise their hand, you know, raise your hand if you're a leader. So here's some words, you know, when I think about leaders and, and how, kind of how I see it, and we might all have our own list. We might have our own list. You might have three words on your list. This is what I see as a leader. You might have 50 words, you know, but these are a few that I really liked when I started thinking about it. And I wanted to share because a lot of us have a lot of these, um, these values here, a lot of these qualities. And so when you look at this list, wise, understanding, good listener, humble, supportive, encourager, connected, innovative. We heard that word a lot during this pandemic. 
we found ways to, to get through this pandemic that have been real creative. So and that resilient, uh, that real resiliency right next to that, outspoken, fearless, intelligent, driven, motivated, respectful, courageous, energetic, uh, outgoing, sense of humor, uh, Indian humor, you know, that's part of our leadership too. That person that always makes somebody laugh or feel good, you know, I like being around those kind of people. You know, they have, they have that good medicine. You know, they, they lift people up, insightful, generous, creative. So just, this is just a list. And my, this list has kind of changed over the last year. You know, I've added some words. I've taken some out. I've switched some up. But this is just my list. We might all have our own list. But when I see these qualities right here, you know, it makes me think, yeah, that person's got some leadership skills. You know, they learned something good somewhere along the way. The next slide. And then this one right here uh, was a, from another leadership trainer. And one of those words that stand out to me, you know, is uh, humility and being humble. And this, she says, research shows the effectiveness of humble leadership. Humble leaders have more influence, they attract better people, and they earn more confidence, respect, and loyalty than those who rely on, on um, just ego and power. And we may know some people like that, you know, but I always notice that the, the humble leaders, you know, they don't have to say much, you know, to, to um, get people to listen to them. And that's one thing that I was um, raised on is always stay humble and, and humility and don't get a big head and things like that. You know, I was like, oh man, I don't wanna be like that. So even now to this day, you know, we, we might have a lot of accomplishments. We might've done some really great things. And I always say, celebrate that, you know, celebrate your accomplishments, your goals and successes. But then also always kind of have that, that balance in there with your humility and, and that, that humbleness. And people will see it. And uh, that's one, one of the teachings that I'm really grateful for uh, in my life, you know, and the things that I've been able to do and be involved in, because I feel like that, that uh, quality right there has really helped me in a lot of ways. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. The next uh, slide. And this right here, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, our community and us all coming together and and how we help each other, you know, when we help each other, you know, that humility comes through to always stay humble. You know, when you see that person uh, down in the gutter, you want, you want to be under them and lift them up and help them. And then this comes from one of my grandpas and who was, who always felt that uh, our community need, needed spirituality. You know, they needed these teachings. They needed these ceremonies. And this is grandpa Parrish Williams, who was, was a part of the unity, the national unity council uh, we brought him and another grandpa from the Seneca Nation, Warren Skye, to help us with the, with the traditional fire, the sacred fire, the grandpa fire that we had at Unity that started, I think, about 97, 90, 1996 or 97, and the importance of our, uh, our spirituality, you know, and our beliefs, a belief system, and the way we pray, you know, and how that helps us and helps our community all come together like this sweat lodge here. See all these uh, different people here at the sweat putting it together. This the sweat was built in in uh, Wisconsin, and it was part of a culture program and behavioral health program to to uh, outreach to the community and for us to help each other and bring the community together uh, in a spiritual way. So Grandpa Parrish too here was was instrumental in going to Washington D.C. to fight for our freedom of religion. Uh, to protect our, our spirituality and our ceremonies, our traditional ways, and getting that law passed in the late 70s. And uh, they fought for that for a few years, but finally was passed. Now our ceremonies and our ways are protected, just like our language. And um, so this is one, one thing that I felt really important in a spiritual part of our life and in, in our communities. The next slide. And this right here, you know, uh, I've already heard just in this session earlier, you know, um, find those those strengths that we have. And I'm, I want to take out that weakness. I want to kind of I heard something that I like that was uh, uh, find your opportunity for growth. And so changing that our strengths and weaknesses, you know, to 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 lift ourselves up, to build ourselves up, ourselves, our family, our community, our tribe, you know, our, our people, wherever we live and that um, that we can find ways to to. Um, to expand that growth, you know, what, whatever we're going through, whatever, like what we're uh, experiencing right now with this, um, this global pandemic and how we're all finding our way through it. So building our personal strengths, you know, building our professional strengths, because a lot of us have changed our, our ways of working. We're working virtually, 
and working online, you know, or maybe doing both a little bit in person. I was really happy to see Tia earlier. You know, I just we just got to Salt Lake and um, and to see her at the health center doing work with the youth and, and staying active here in the community. And so know where we need to learn and grow as leaders and then don't be afraid to try something new. Uh, someone was telling me about a, a youth, the running program that we that they had for the girls, for the young ladies, and then to have an open mind. You know, that's how we continue to grow, expand our our uh, skills and our abilities and all the qualities that that we need as we move forward. You know, and take all of these teachings and and um, information that we're sharing today, this good medicine, and then implement it. You know, like uh, and I think uh, Lauren was talking about, write it down. You know. We, we, sometimes it's hard to remember all this information. You know, write it down. You know, take a take a screenshot. You know, and then take this information, use it, implement it into your life. And that's what this is for. When we share these, um, you know, we share all this information. You know, it's for us to all share it with each other and then go out and use it. So um, I think that was the last slide that I wanted to use. And then we have uh, another thing that I wanted to share was about the talk about the um, we're going to have a talking circle, but. Um, was about the medicine wheel. You saw that that slide of the medicine wheel, and, and what is it? What does that medicine wheel symbolize? You know, and why are the medicine wheel teachings important? And um, you know, how do they help us? And in all of our tribes, we had you know we have different maybe ways of expressing these teachings. But in that medicine wheel, you'll see, you know, just um, one example is there's the they'll say there's the four directions but there's also seven directions in that medicine wheel that I wanted to share with you. And, and we're getting some good answers right now. When we talk about the medicine wheel and, and uh, the teachings that go along with it. Um, we'll, say, we'll say the seven directions. We might see four there, you know, the east, the south, the west, and the north. And then there's also that, that direction that is down, that's, that's straight down the, the, the land we walk in, we walk on, where we live, you know, if it's on the res, if it's in the country, if it's in the city, the urban areas, wherever it is, you know, that land we walk on, Atita Hudadu, we call it the mother earth that, that we live on, that we were everywhere we go, the, the things that we do, you know, that we, that direction there, that we acknowledge it, we respect it, you know, we try to, try to um, treat it in, in a good way. Then the direction up, you know, all the, we're getting some great answers here. The direction up into the sky and, uh, and our, um, our teachings of spirituality. And that they always say, you know, um, you know talk to a higher power. You know, have, a, have a, a way of praying. Have a relationship with the creator. And so these teachings, too, we're, we're finding those, um, those ways in our life, too, as we, we go through our, uh, our life and our journey. And that direction up is the sixth direction up into the sky. We call it Dita Huda, Atiyas Dita Wahat, the the heavens up there, the Creator up in the heavens. That direction, and uh, they say where maybe where our relatives go, or some of us believe that's where we came from. We came from the stars. We were put down here on the earth, but we came from the stars. Someday we're going to go back there. And so these are some of the teachings in that medicine wheel. That's the sixth direction, and in the seventh direction, uh, when you see that. Um, when you see that image, we're going to share the image with you. And uh, but some really good answers here, you know. Uh, someone put that right there. The the they're asking if the slides will be available. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. You might have to ask Lauren or Sabu on that. But all these answers here, you know, keep balance in your life. You know, favorite direction is inward, the self. It's who I am. So some great answers here, and and then we can also keep learning more and more. You know, as we look into these these um teachings that are probably thousands of years old you know these symbols and these circles have been around for for thousands of generations you know as long as our people have been here so um victoria if you could share the uh, some great some great feedback there on the medicine wheel and that that last direction uh yeah you guys will get be able to have access to these to these uh slides and all of this information here which is cool um so some great answers. And then the medicine wheel, um, we'll show the image up here. I have a couple slides that I kind of want to just, just go through quick before we start the, the talking circle. Um, and then another thing before our talking circle, oh, there it is. So the medicine wheel, you know, you'll see those four directions. And some people even talk about those uh, cardinal, semi-cardinal directions, you know, the, the, the north, 
east, you know, the southeast, you know, the, the northwest, the northeast. We, we might even have stories about that, which some of our tribes do. And then that middle one, that middle direction, that seventh direction is, is us. And uh, I think, um, uh, I can't remember who was talking about it, about that fire, you know, that Seminole, uh, that Seminole uh, Hulisla, that Seminole medicine, the teachings is that fire, maybe that spirit inside of us in, in that burning fire, uh, spirit inside of us. Our spirit is that in the, right in the middle. And, uh, you know, what keeps us going, what helps us, you know, build that fire up, keep that fire going, you know, in our life as we go through all these things. Because in the medicine world, we're today we're talking about, you know, mental health, but in, in, in our balance and wellness, they're all connected. That mental is connected to that physical, you can see. It's connect, connected to that emotional and that spiritual, um, that spiritual part of our life. And they're all connected in the middle. So there's not just one, one uh, focus area or component that is over the other ones. They're all connected in our Native American traditional knowledge and teachings. And so you see it right here. So that's what I like to share. And then, yeah, we're always trying to keep a balance in there. But that's the challenging part. You know, if we had that figured out, you know, we probably wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> but you know, that's the challenge. And that's the, our journey. You know, that's it. We, we try to figure that out along the way and find those ways to get our balance. Because we're all different. We all, we're all different people. We all have our own unique spirit. And so we're all finding our way and ways to balance this. So uh, that's what I wanted to share with you, you know, the, the teachings that I've uh, been shared with, you know, it's been shared with me and given to me. So, and then right here is a little more information um, and, and shows you about this medicine wheel that it goes deeper and deeper. You know, the more you want to learn about it, you know, that that's in your journey. You can, you can keep, you can journey just about that east direction. And then you can go down to that south direction. You see on here, they, they all have a different uh, representation. And we start talking about each direction. That's why it's just, just a, a little uh, outline image you can look at it more and you can do your own research. Your tribe might have certain beliefs and teachings of this medicine wheel. And so that's what's beautiful about all of our tribes. We all have so many stories and teachings, you know, that, that we could go, we may never learn in our lifetime, but we can continue to learn, you know, as we continue, as we you know, continue our journey in this life. And so thanks for sharing that, um, Victoria. And you'll see a lot, a lot on there. All of those parts are all, um, are all right there in that medicine wheel. Um, we have our polling questions and then I think Tia or Lauren is going to do a, another introduction before we start our talking circle. And I know we only have so much time, but also I want to get into that talking circle right here. Uh, I think Tia or Lauren, I'm not sure who's going to kind of reshare this information and then we'll start this, this talking circle and want to hear from you guys a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, so just to reiterate um, for, for moving forward into the talking circle, um, how to ask a question or comment. So at the bottom of your Zoom screen, um, you'll first select chat at the bottom. Um, it's right next to the green button. And then you'll type your question or comment into the chat box that will appear on the right. Um, so make sure that it's on everyone too, or if you're trying to send in a direct message, you can also do that but just to be sure. And then next slide, yes. So how to ask for social or emotional support during our talking circle. Um, select chat at the bottom of the Zoom screen again, and then go click to the downward arrow and click on Antoinette's name and, and type in the chat that you want to go into a wellness breakout room. And then you will proceed to go into a separate breakout room just with you and Antoinette um, in that time for you guys to share and, and you can talk to her. So if you have any other questions, um, you can still put it in the chat below. So now we'll move on to the talking circle. All right, thank you. To social media and media like listening to music and artists of their native lung of tongue for sure um, being in nature celebrating native excellence through explorations of native artists and musicians burning cedar these are definitely good good self cool uh, self care tips for sure tending our surrounding sharing stories drumming and singing talking to my garden and plants. I like that. Art, 
Oh yeah, that's a good one. Sharing our indigenous medicine to roommates and partners who aren't native. Yes, singing to yourself. Remembering who I am and where I come from and where I'm going. Yes. Calling grandma. Oh, yes. Grandma is important. Fishing, picking berries, gathering plants and food and medicine. Singing to my dog. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. These are great. Using humor. Definitely. All right, and then we'll continue on our next slide. So we reached the end of our session and now I know some of you are itching to get to the raffle. Those of you who stayed with us to this point will have had the chance to win some cool prizes today. And there will be four winners and the winners will be asked to send a direct message to Victoria in the chat box. And please give your your full name and email to Victoria, and she will follow up with you to organize the shipping of your awesome swag. So the first item that we have ready to raffle off is a t-shirt from Native Healthy Youth, and Cebu would, um, will spin the wheel of generosity. Oh, so close. It's Kayla Rousey Lee. So Kayla, you'll just um, direct message Victoria and she'll send out your cool, awesome native swag. And then now we'll be raffling off our second item. So there's still a chance to win. A lucky winner will win a bandana and a tote bag from Center for Native American Youth. So let's spin that wheel. So we have San Diego C. So San Diego C, you will also direct message Victoria. Yay. Now we have our final, uh, not our final, our third item for tonight. So our third item is Amazing Unity T-shirt. Woo, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you want again. And you will just also email, not email, um, message Victoria down below. And then our last and final prize will win a democracy is indigenous t-shirt from the Kui. And then I think it's Mel, my, May Lee X. So you'll also down below message Victoria on Zoom. And thank you guys for participating in today's session. Additionally, we'll love it if you can provide us some of your feedback on today's session, on today's survey, and you'll see the survey link in the chat box now. And now we'll have the honor for Brian Frejo to close us out with a prayer. All right, uh, I want to share a song with you guys. Uh, we know we're used to hearing all of our songs throughout the summertime. And as we go through this change, you know, we keep singing and you know, we keep singing. We keep using our medicines. We keep putting our prayers up. You know, we keep these ceremonies alive. I share a song with you guys for the weekend. This goes with the water. A song is our thankful thankfulness for that water of life and how that water helps us in, in our life and our healing and wellness. <clears throat> <clears throat> No woman with your
Reindigenizing health, many blessings to all of you. And that song is saying, uh, greeting that water wherever you are, maybe like the lakes, the creeks, the rivers, the oceans, that water of life. And when we drink it too, you know, that we're thankful for it, that we're greeting that water, we're thinking that water, really love it, really uh, we care for it, we protect it. And so I wanted to share that with you guys today. That song came from No Debt from the uh, Ocheti Shakoe Sacred Stone Camp. Uh, North Dakota, right by the Cannonball River. So I share that with you guys today. Many blessings this weekend. Aho, duda, hey, hiri, mahi. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you so much, Brian, for everything. I wanted to do a, a last uh, minute's uh, thought about something. So someone uh, wanted to give their prize to someone else. So I wanted to see what like we would we like to do one more spin of the of the wheel of generosity uh to see if y'all want to win a prize i just uh someone yeah, gave, <laughs> i could share my screen, i could share my screen really quick um <laughs> can the kui staff win just kidding my name's not there <laughs> one more one more spin and so i'll do this right now Hey. hey. Open. <laughs> spin, spin it again. Spin that it again. Was a close one. <laughs> okay. Spin it again. Oh, Kelvin. <laughs> but thank you, though. Oh, Lance. Lance. Lance, aren't you tech? Aren't you like somewhat on payroll with us since like? <laughs> <laughs> Can I make you sing for us all the time? <laughs> I, I, I can do an interesting Sander. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Yay. So congratulations, Xander. Which if you guys don't know, Xander is uh, his uh, little one. And hey. he sings for some of us, our things. And if you ever see this cute little kid with his drum, that's him. That's Xander. <laughs> he was definitely for, uh, there for our conference, too. So yeah, congratulations, Xander. Hey, Xander. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you all for your time, uh, Brian. I really, we really appreciate all your support. Our big thanks to our youth council, to our, to every, all the participants today. I really feel like there was a real deep connection and a lot uh, of great tools. And I want to say a uh, new found family and friendship. So uh, we'll look out uh, for our future events, but also um, we'll send out the, the recording and the PowerPoint presentations for all of you after today. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, you Council. Well done. Oh, uh dude. Hey, Kastu I'll see you guys again. Thank you, Brian. <laughs>